Hey everyone, Tim Moore here. It is cod season in New England and I am headed out off the coast of New Hampshire in search of some cod and whatever else I can find out here, but I'm hoping to catch my one keeper cod. Uh, I'm in the Autopilot 136, which is an amazing vertical jigging kayak. I love this, I love this kayak for vertical jigging. I'm gonna be in waters anywhere from 60 to 130 feet deep and cover some of the lures that I use. Hopefully find uh, my one fish. The, the limit is 22 inches, one fish. Hopefully I go home with my one cod. I know it seems like I'm headed out quite a ways. I'm gonna be uh, about two miles out is my first spot that I'm gonna start. Seems like a lot of work for, for one cod and maybe it is for some people, but it's a lot of fun. It gives me a chance to, to get out. Um, and uh, in first, this is my first trip of the year. Got my dry suit on and I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, in, the, in this video as well and uh, poke around and see what else is out here you know there, there could be some sea bass there could be some pollock there could be some uh, Acadian redfish depending on how far out I go haddock you never know if I end up in deep enough water I am close to the cod spawning protection area so I have to make sure I stay away from that but anyway hopefully if you're watching this I found some fish and I'll cover some of the techniques and the setups and and all that that I use. Enjoy the video. Well, I'm still on my way to the area that I want to fish, but I'm on a spot that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna just drop down, see if there's anything on the bottom here, see what kind of current we have today. Looks like quite a bit of current. So I'm gonna have to fish some, some of my heavier stuff. In 78 feet of water. And I'm just gonna drop to the bottom. There we go. I just wanna keep it off the bottom for one thing. We're drifting. This is mostly structure area as opposed to fishing out in the mud. For anyone that has fished for cod, uh, deep sea fishing off in a boat, often fishing in, on mud bottom. So there's not as much to get hung up on down there, but here, there definitely is. I may end up doing some power drifting, which is basically then it's just going to use the motor to offset the current a little bit if I can. I'm not really having too much trouble holding bottom yet, but if I do, I will use the motor. All right, so now I'm out about 70 feet of water. I'm on some structure on the edge of a deep spot. I'm just gonna drift along here. There is some green on the bottom. A lot of times these cod and these rocks will show up as green on the bottom. They're pretty tight to the rocks. The biggest thing about this, it's like any other species that you fish for, is familiar, familiarity is gonna be is key for this. Knowing these fish, knowing their habits at a given time of year, at the time of the year that you're targeting them, is really huge because cod, their depth range is so variable. You know, there are people in, on party boats out catching cod right now in 150, 180 feet of water. And I'm in 68 right now. It looks like there's something on the bottom here. And these inshore cod are oftentimes found in 60 to 90 feet of water. But not every 60 or 90 foot hump, like every other species, is going to hold fish and bait is a huge factor with these cod if you can find an area with bait fish on it my experience has been there will almost always be some fish around chasing that bait but tide is a very big big player in this just like anything uh, in the in the ocean you know they've they feed on certain tides, sometimes more on one than the other, sometimes not at all on one. And so that's my handicap today is that I don't do this very often. I do it maybe once a year and I don't have, uh, I don't have a lot of designated spots. There are some spots in this area, probably a mile from where I am here that I could go and that I know generally holds some cod, but I, I want to fish on the edge of this really deep water. I just want to explore. 
Oh. oh, I'm getting some bites. Where's that rocks? Oh, I'm getting some bites. I'm gonna try different colors today, different profiles. Right now I'm fishing a, basically a almost a three ounce diamond jig with a green tail on the hook, teaser on the hook. I have uh, some pink plastics rigged up that I'll try. Uh, oops, something doesn't feel very big. I think I might have foul hooked whatever it was. Just drifting along real slow. Not much fight to it, whatever it is. 78 feet of water. Maybe it's a piece of bottom. <laughs> it's not a fish at all. Cunner. Oh, look at that. <sighs> well, that's a bummer. That was an Arcadian redfish. They are delicious. Just spit up a crab out of his stomach. It came off right next to the kayak. That's a bummer. But I'm gonna make a mark. Because if there are redfish around, I can load up on those. They are delicious fried. They are schooling fish, so they're very seldom alone. What's this? Make me another one. smaller one. Oh no, they're sculping. They're not redfish at all. That is a spiny sculpin. We used to catch these in our lobster traps a lot. They're kind of ugly and beautiful at the same time. That's, I think what I just had on a minute ago. I thought it was a red fish because it was red. Springtime, early springtime, fishing in the ocean, regardless of where you're fishing, safety needs to be your number one priority. Now, regardless of time of year, PFD, always wear it. It doesn't work if you don't wear it. Always wear your PFD. But because I'm out in early spring, it's uh, about 45 degrees outside temperature, 42 degree, 42.5 degree water temperature. I'm gonna use the 120 rule um, to decide whether or not to wear my dry suit. And that is anytime the combined air and water temperature is below 120, you should wear your dry suit. That's the, the rule I'm, think, um, I'm using today. Today it's, it's under 90, so I am definitely wearing my dry suit. If I were to ever go in uh, I would probably be able to get back to my kayak and get back up on top of it and out of the water, but I want as much time as possible. I am almost three miles offshore. And if I were to go in the water this time of year, I would need some extra protection to keep me dry so that I can get back out and, and back into my kayak. I don't foresee that happening, but nobody ever does. <coughs> um, other things that I have, you know, I've visually i'm i'm pretty easy to see uh my vhf radio is a is a must for me whenever i'm offshore i always have my vhf in case i need to call um, coast guard or a nearby boat for help i can do that um and uh, i let somebody know where i was going and and where i was going to launch from so somebody knows where i am should i not return um so i don't have a written float plan but i did verbally tell somebody where i would be uh, how long I planned on fishing and um, where my launch point was. So that's a very important thing, especially if you're going to take off offshore and you're going to travel miles from your destination. You want to make sure somebody knows where you left from and what time you plan to be back. So that if a few hours after you return, your, your scheduled return comes and goes and you're not there, they, can, they know where to start looking. So take those safety considerations. There are obviously a number of other things you can do, but you know, PFD, dry suit, VHF radio, float plan. Pretty good, good idea when you are heading out offshore.
This feels cloudy. 110 feet of water. Well, cod number one. I don't think it's a keeper on that 2.7 ounce diamond jig. I'm gonna give it a measure real quick. Oh, so close. 20, 20 inches. But hey, it's April cod season. I came out for cod. There's a cod. I am using the motor to slow my drift. Keep my line a little bit more vertical. Helps with sensitivity and lure control. There's one. Oh, this feels better. This feels better. Hundred and ten to one hundred and twelve feet of waters, and where all of my bites have come from. <laughs> The nice thing about not fishing in 180 feet of water is these fish will all go back down just fine. I'm not muscling them up too fast. Taking my time, keeping some pressure on them. Getting them to come to the top. Yep, about the same size as the last one. Definitely not a keeper, but you would be surprised how hard a 20 inch cod fish fights. Well, as you can see, the wind has uh, unpredictably kicked up. Wasn't supposed to, but that's the weather forecast these days. So I got three cod, a uh, couple of sculpin. I didn't get the keeper I was looking for, but I've only been out here for uh, three hours, so not bad. Three cod, three hours. Uh, I did a lot of exploring, a lot of looking around. I, I checked a bunch of areas that. I've always wanted to come out to and I've never come quite far enough to, to fish these areas so um, and that one of the areas is where I caught the three cod so that's that's good I had a couple other hits that I'm pretty sure were cod the one thing to remember when you're fishing in these tidal waters especially when you come offshore like this is wind against tide or wind with tide wind and tide when I came out the wind and the tide were in the same direction when you have wind with tide it tends to lay the waves down and they don't kick up as big. However, if you are planning on fishing for a while and the wind is gonna stay in the same direction all day, when the tide turns, if you have wind with tide to begin with, once the tide turns, which it does every six hours, you're gonna have now wind against tide and that's gonna kick up like this. Um, it's, the tide's just about turning um, but the wind's kicked up higher than forecast, much higher than forecast. Once this tide does turn, it's about high tide right now. Once this tide does turn, this is going to kick up even harder. So that's why I'm leaving now. I'm not going to stick around. I could fish the rest of the day, but it's just not worth it. It's not safe. Uh, I have uh, almost three miles. I fished my way back in a little bit. I have almost three miles to go back in. I don't want to be in these nasty... Um, this nasty chop if it gets any bigger than this especially when these waves are coming from behind me like they are it's nice to have the wind at my back but with the rudder in the water it has a tendency to want to pull the, the stern of the kayak around sideways so it gets a little little dicey and uncomfortable and tomorrow's another day anyway um, some of the gear that I was using this is a, probably the he on the heavy side uh, I, I fished this rod out of my boat quite a bit but this is a Daiwa Area Rex jigging rod. Uh, this is the this is a medium. Yep. Um, it's a really nice rod. It's it's pretty light. It is a little bit on the beefier side. 
Uh, I already had this diamond chain jig. This is a 2.7 ounce diamond chain jig. It's uh, made by Daddy Mac Lures out of Abington, Mass. Uh, it's a good cod jig, good for sea bass, lots of different things. Uh, I already had this tied on. My rod of choice is nice and light. Uh, this is the this is the Harrier slow pitch jigging rod from Daiwa, and uh, I have the Lexa um, bait cast reel on here. But this slow pitch jigging rod generally has a handle that's about 10 inches longer than this one, and it's a little bit too long in the kayak, as you can see, because of the seat. With that 10 inches, it keeps the reel way out away from my body, and, and it's just it's really uncomfortable. They're great in the boat because you can really tuck that under your arm, which is what they're designed for. But in the kayak, that long handle forces you to fish sideways a lot. And when you're trying to manage fish, it, it gets a little bit, it gets hung up on things. So I bought some butt ends and I cut this down and I put a new butt end on the end of it to make it a much more comfortable um, jigging rod. Super light, as you can see, it's like nothing. This, this lure that I have on here wasn't quite heavy enough to stay on the bottom. So I didn't fish it all that much. The spinning rod drops a lot faster, which is why I stuck with that little bit bigger, beefier rod today. When I'm fishing in 100 feet of water, I want the lure down there as fast as I can possibly get it. And you, there's nothing that's going to compare to the free fall of a, of a spinning reel, in, in my opinion. So that's why I stuck with that. But uh, some, some pink plastics often work really well for cod. And the main thing is just being, being willing to move around and fish different depths and different areas. And when I say different areas, you know, some, these fish can be found anywhere from 60 to 130 feet of water. I caught fish today in 110. And sometimes if you're on a piece of structure that comes up, is surrounded by deeper water, the fish will be on one side of it or the other. It, usually almost never both. And so when I say being willing to, to move around and fish different areas, fish both sides of the structure that you're on and sometimes you're just on a flat that drops off and you're fishing that leading edge but if you're on a hump or a long ridge line like I was on I, fought, I caught fish on both sides of that I caught fish early on one side and then poof they were gone once the wind kicked up and uh, it took me a little while but I worked my way around to the other side of it and I caught fish over there so move around fish different depths I'll generally start in 60 feet of water and fish my way deeper, depending on the direction of the wind and my drift. But that's generally what I'll do. I don't usually go out past, I don't pass fishing grounds and then fish my way back into them. I usually fish my way out beyond them, but it depends on your direction of drift and, and you, your plan of attack. But have a game plan. You can use bait for cod. I generally don't, it's, it's just more stuff to deal with, but you can buy clams or mackerel use it, a little bit of that on there and, and they will eat that. I like jigging for cod the most. I think it's the most fun for me. So that's what I stuck with. And for colors, greens and pinks. My line is, is a 30 pound Daiwa J Braid X8 Grand. It's, uh, it's gray. And uh, I have a 30 pound fluorocarbon leaders. The main thing when you're fishing down in these rocks is to constantly check these leaders because they will get nicked up down there in the rocks and if you get any nicks in, in them it will break pretty easily when you especially when you have a fish on so i'm gonna head back in and uh get get, get everything cleaned up get my kayak rinsed down and uh start thinking about my next trip out so if you're looking for a chance to get out and catch some cod the limit in in most of new england i think I don't know if Massachusetts is different, but uh, New Hampshire usually follows the federal regulations. So we're allowed one cod, 22 inch minimum per day, per angler. And that is, a, it's a 14 day, I think it's April 1st to April 14th in the 2023 season. And you're allowed that one fish per day. You do not always have to go three miles. There are many, many places where, where you can get into 60 to 100 feet of water along the New England coast within a mile of shore really easy access really easy to get to i just wanted to do a little bit of exploring and try a new area today and so i fished my way out but you don't have to if you're thinking three miles is not worth one cod fish at 22 inches you're probably right i wouldn't do it every day there are plenty of other places that i can fish that are closer to shore so next time we'll probably stick a little closer to shore um, maximize the amount of fishing time and minimize the amount of travel time that, that I have to 
in, to spend in the day and, and uh, maximize the battery life. But so far, you know, I, I went 3.3 miles from my launch to my furthest point, and uh, I'm on my way back in. I still have more than 50% of my battery life, so that's pretty good. I, I was not using the motor the whole time. I do not run the motor on 10. I run it uh, on 8, 8.5. And, and um, I was power drifting, just kind of using the motor to slow my drift, but it was on like 1.5 to 2 most of, the, most of the day, or the few hours that I've been out here. So uh, happy with the trip, happy to get three, three, three fish, happy to catch the target species anyway. Uh, got the three cod. And, Next time, uh, I hope for my keeper. So thanks for watching.